Henry again with tutorial two for class two of uh, parametric design. We're going to make a parametric field of objects this time. Um, and I'm starting from uh, a series of numbers, make a series of points, uh, and I'm going to get a series. And I've already set up all my parameters, make this go a little bit quicker. Um, so I'm I want the number of x points is going to be the count of my series. The cell size is going to be the step size of my series. And I'm going to copy that uh, for a, a series of numbers to give me the y points. And I'm going to keep the same cell size, uh, but have a different slider controlling the dimensions in y. And if I go over to point here, I can uh, make a point from coordinates. Hook up the x series to x, the y series to y. I made a little fixed parameter here, which I set to uh, negative 30 for my z. Um, you'll, see, uh, you'll see what's happening that um, I need to change my data matching from longest list to cross-reference. So now I have a field of points. I also have an attractor point, which is just a parameter that I set up and I, I created a point in uh, Rhino and I said set one point to, to set up my attractor point. The reason I've done that is the first thing that I want to do is I want to go through um, and I want to calculate the, the distance from that attractor point to each of the points in my point field. And, you know, I should really make a parameter for that. Because it's good practice. Let's call it point field. And what I'm going to use that distance for is at each one of those points, I'm going to make a sphere. So I'm going to get a sphere component. And a sphere takes a base plane, a mouse over it, and a radius. So I need to turn that field of points into a field of planes. And I can do that in the vector tab. I, I can just, actually, I want to make an xy plane. And the xy plane, if I give this component an origin point, and you can see I have all of my little planes there. Just turn off the preview. And the default radius for those spheres is, uh, is 1. Now if I hook up the distance, that's way too big. Uh, but fortunately, one of my parameters that I've made down here is I've made a scale factor, which I'm going to use to scale down that distance. It's a number that's goes from 0 to 1, somewhere in that range, hooked up to that slider. So if I, if I come over to Scalar, I can get a Multiply component. I'm going to multiply my distance by my scale factor. If I use that as the radius, I should get something a little bit more manageable. Now that radius is something we're going to use again too, so I'm going to, I'm going to make a, a parameter to hold that. Radius. Okay, so what's nice about this, now you see when I move my point, which I can because I made it in Rhino, uh, you know, my field of spheres updates. Next thing I want to do is I want to draw a line sticking out of that sphere. It's just what I want to do. So um, what I'm going to do is I need two points to draw a line from and to. And I'm going to take a, a move component, and I'm going to move my points in that point field. And I need a vector, so I'm going to make one. And I'm going to make a vector from two points. I'm going to make a vector that starts at that point in the point field and points in the direction of the attractor. And right now, each of those vectors has a, is going the whole distance, that's its magnitude, but I, wanna, I want the magnitude of that vector that I'm going to move along. I'm going to set it with uh, amplitude, the word for magnitude. Um, I want it to be the same as the radius. Fortunately, I have that as a uh, parameter here. Okay, so I now have a vector that if I move my point along that vector, right, I get a new point that's sitting on the sphere in the direction of the, of the attractor point. And I actually, I want, 
another point, yet another point. But I want this point to be a fixed, uh, a fixed amplitude. So I'm here, this is the output of my vector uh, that I made from two points. But this time, as the amplitude that I want to set it to is going to be my stock length, and that's just a parameter that I made up. So that gives me a second vector over here. And if I copy and paste, I'm going to take the output of this move, that's the green points, make it the input of this move, and the new vector that I want to use is my fixed length vector. So you can see what's happening here. Let me draw a line, my favorite component. I'm going to draw a line from the point on the sphere to the new point. And you can see what's happening. So when I change my stock length, right, those lengths all change. When I move my point, they all point somewhere else. And what I now want to do is I want to make a cone on the end of that point. And that's in surface here. There's a primitive. There's a cone. Um, and it's got, it takes three inputs. So one is, uh, you know, I don't want to use that cone radius. Yeah, I do want to use that cone radius. That is going to be the radius of my cone. And let's make it like a square. Let's make the length of the cone be the same as the radius. Now all we need is a base plane for the cone to sit on. But I don't want that plane to be an XY plane. I need to make a better plane. And what I can do is I can make a plane from a normal. So a normal is just a vector that points in the direction of Z for your plane. So I have that here. It's the vector that I use. This points from each of the points to the attractor point. I'm going to use that as my Z vector. And I am going to use the end point. I really should have made a parameter for this, but I didn't. That point as the base point of my plane. So now I have a set of planes that I can put into my cone. And all of a sudden, I have now cones that are pointing at my attractor point. And the last thing I want to do is I want to make a surface out of that line and give it a little bit of thickness. So I'm going to make a pipe. The pipe takes a curve as an input. And for the thickness of that, uh, for the thickness of that um, pipe, I'm going to go back to my cone radius. So it's just a continuous pointy thing. And there you have it. So I have a field of objects that are now variable in size, at least at their base, and variable in orientation in terms of their little pointer that no matter what I do when I move this always ends up pointing at my attractor point.